seeing a lot of false teaching on socials. And we live in such a social media world. It's just people are just consuming all the time. It's scary to think what we're all consuming. We live in a culture where we're creating this false Jesus. We're creating this false God. And we're not going to what God's word says. They're creating something that's just making them feel good about themselves. It's so arrogant and it's prideful and it's selfish. And we selfishly seek our own lusts and our own passions and our own wants. And we try to mold God into who we want him to be, into who we think he should be. Instead of having the God of scripture mold us and change us, we should be the ones being changed. We don't try to change God. He he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we should be denying our flesh. We should be dying to our sins, picking up our cross, being transformed by the power of his word, not aiming to make our sin more acceptable. False preachers and faith leaders engaging in unbiblical behaviors and promoting false doctrines are a serious concern within the Christian community. It is crucial for believers to be vigilant and discerning, ensuring that their spiritual nourishment comes from sources that adhere strictly to the teachings of the Bible. You can't dance a victory like me. Type it right now, I earn this praise. I earn this praise. You can roll your eyes all you want to. You can talk about me if you will. You can send a text out, you can write a blog, but I earn this praise. I earn this blessing. I earn this car. I earn this house. I earn this smile. I earn this life. I earned it. I earned it. I earned it because I was faithful when I was hurting and because I held on when I was bleeding. I ain't gonna let nobody talk me out of my praise. No! No, 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 hell no, hell no. I want to get on your nerves. I want to get on your nerves. I want to get on your nerves. I fully plan to get on your nerves. Believers must be aware of the behaviors and teachings of their faith leaders. Discernment, as advised in 1 John 4, one involves testing the spirits to see whether they are from God. This means evaluating whether the teachings and actions of a preacher align with the biblical truth. When preachers and faith leaders engage in behaviors that are clearly against biblical teachings or promote doctrines that contradict the core principles of Christianity, it is a sign of falsehood. Such actions can lead believers astray and undermine the integrity of the faith community. Let's get back to the gospel for a minute. You quoted from Psalms, and of course, any time I read from the Bible, I want it to be exactly right. Um, and, and that's why you do what you do, right? You're a man of God. You, you study the Word of God. You want to bring people closer to the Word of God, right, correct? Right. All right, so if we go to Matthew 19, okay, in response to what you said about Psalms, now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And this was a young rich man, as mm -hmm. you, you know the story. Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had such great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Respond to that? Respond to that. Well, first of all, when, when, when uh, the rich young ruler showed up and uh, he said, uh, you know, what you need to do is take the things that you have to sell, sell it, and then come and follow me. It was about loving God with your stuff. If you keep reading down a couple more scriptures, it says, and he received a hundredfold everything that he gave, everything that he sold. So we talk about, you know, is it is it impossible for rich people to get into heaven? You know, that's not the truth. You know, rich people are going to go to heaven just like average people. The issue there is, will you be willing to, to take your things and share it with other people? Again, we can't assume just because you have some things that you automatically are not sharing with the people who, who need it. We, we invest in people's lives, not only in our community. It is important for the church community to hold its leaders accountable. This includes confronting leaders who deviate from biblical teachings and calling out false doctrines. Accountability helps maintain the purity and holiness of the church. If a church is found to be promoting false doctrines or engaging in unbiblical behaviors, believers should not hesitate to leave. Staying in such an environment can be spiritually harmful. 
Finding a church that adheres to biblical truth is essential for one's spiritual growth and well-belling. A true church is built on the foundation of God's word. Any deviation from this foundation should be a red flag. The focus should always be on what the Bible says and how it instructs believers to livers to live. This is a powerful portion of Scripture. It is powerful because Paul embraces the Trinity, the Son, the Spirit, and the Father, and essentially says, by foolishly being bewitched by a false gospel or a false addition to the gospel, you have called into question the work of the Son and the Spirit and the Father. In other words, you have assaulted heaven at its heights. This is an all-out attack on the triune God. Now, the word that jumps off the page probably initially is in verse 1, and it's the word bewitched. You won't find that word anywhere else in the Bible. This is the only place it is used. Is Paul saying that these Galatian believers were bewitched? Absolutely. Don't you point at me. <laughs> Yes, I'm. Oh, Mark. He's drunk. He's drunk in the Holy Ghost. What are we going to do with him now? Yeah. I'm cool. I can't let her know. Huh? Because she's never been drunk. <laughs> That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They, they, they thought they were drunk. How about your own self? Some preachers have claimed to perform miracles that seem dubious, such as making a shorter leg grow or healing a person's back instantly. While miracles are a part of Christian belief, exploiting them for personal gain or using them as a spectacle without genuine divine intervention is deceitful and manipulative. Believers must remain vigilant and discerning, ensuring that their spiritual nourishment comes from leaders who uphold biblical truth and exhibit integrity. When preachers are caught in assault, false preaching, or performing questionable miracles, it is crucial to address these issues promptly. By holding leaders accountable and seeking spiritual guidance from trustworthy sources, believers can protect their faith and maintain a healthy and holy church community.